This keyboard has optical switches, it's super slim, works perfectly with your M1 and Intel Macs, and it's cheaper than Apple's own keyboard. Could this be the perfect keyboard for Mac users? Hello everyone, my name's Mike, and here at Tech Kamun, we uncover all kinds of tech. So hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more, and don't forget to hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm, so it helps out the channel. But today I have the Keychron K3 keyboard, and boy, am I excited to tell you why I love this thing. So if you don't know, Keychron are a well-known company in the tech community, making high quality keyboards with all the bells and whistles without the big price tag. The K3 keyboard is the world's first hot swappable, low profile optical wireless mechanical keyboard out there. And it's like no other keyboard I've tried. Obviously, this keyboard actually has a very slim profile. It's actually 40% slimmer than the conventional mechanical key switch keyboard. And let me tell you why I love this. So another keyboard made popular by creators like MKBHD is the Keychron K2. And it's a lovely keyboard, but it's a thick boy, meaning that for long typing sessions, you really need a wrist rest and a thick one at that. And if you are someone who likes to jump from the magic keyboard to let's say a mechanical keyboard, then you're really going to be completely in a different experience when you're switching between the two and it actually might turn you away from a optical or mechanical keyboard. Even though the K2 is a great keyboard, being in the Apple ecosystem is just too different when switching devices. Well, the K3 is the best of both worlds. It's slim enough that you can use it for long typing sessions without needing a wrist rest and it's really comfortable because the keys have a longer travel than let's say the Magic keyboard, making it less fatiguing when typing. The layout, as you can see, is a 75% of a traditional keyboard, but this actually makes it feel more natural when you're moving from the Magic Keyboard or from a MacBook keyboard, for example. The body is made from a black aluminium frame with a plastic base. This is a light keyboard, but I actually have the Keychron K1 version 4, and that has a full aluminium body, which is heavier, but it feels more premium. Not to say that the K3 doesn't feel premium, but the K1 V4 is just a notch above the K3. The K3 has four nice rubber feet with the rear feet being slightly taller, which makes it a nicer typing experience as it's slanted. The caps are made really well. And if they are anything like the other Keychron caps that I've used, then they'll be great in the long term. In the box, you get Windows and Mac specific keycaps. So if you're a Windows user, you can just switch out the Mac keycaps for the Windows ones but straight out of the box, it's pre-installed with Mac keycaps, which sort of suggests to me their market is geared towards Apple users. The keyboard is also backlit with a whole bunch of effects. You can change the colors of almost every effect with just a few simple key presses. And I love about 80% of the key effects, but typically I switch between two or three of them, depending on my mood. You can dim the RGB lighting from low, medium, and high brightness, and you can turn off the backlight altogether. I will get into the switches because I was fascinated by this. Connecting to your Mac is really easy via the braided cable that's included or via Bluetooth 5.1. You can connect up to three devices to one keyboard by pressing the FN and then the one, two or three keys, which corresponds to the one, two and three devices. There are also two switches. One switch is for switching between Mac and iOS devices and then from Windows and Android devices. And then the next toggles between Bluetooth, off, and then cable use. The toggles are nicer than the previous Keychron keyboards as it protrudes a little bit more and has more of a textured surface, meaning that it's a little bit easier to use the switches than previous keyboards, even compared to my uh, K1 version 4. Charging is done through the USB-C port on the back and it takes about an hour-ish to fully charge. There is also an LED indicator next to the port, which turns red when the battery is running low. Battery life is fantastic. I got around three weeks before I needed to charge it. I actually just charged it yesterday for the first time. And that was with backlighting on. But I do wish it was a bit easier to get into this thing, just in case if let's say in like five years time, I wanted to replace the battery to help reduce e-waste and obviously add a bit more life to this keyboard. That is one improvement that I would like Keychron to make. Let's get into the switches because that was the most interesting part of this whole keyboard in my opinion. So there's a couple of different configurations with this. You can either 
could choose white or RGB backlighting, but I would recommend getting the RGB because the resell on them are a little bit better. And then you can choose either to have the low profile gator on uh, mechanical switches, or you can go for the more interesting and slimmer optical switches, which are hot swappable. This has two advantages. Optical switches have a much faster response time, meaning that you'll get much better experience when gaming, but also it's nice when typing as well because the keystrokes just happen much faster. Also, optical switches have no physical contacts unlike mechanical switches. So optical switches are more durable, meaning a lifespan of 100 million keystrokes, which is double the amount of most mechanical switches out there. So how do these compare in the real world? So the mechanical keys are available in red, which has a linear feel, so no defined click or feedback to the key presses, just feels the same all the way through when you press the key. There is also a blue switch, which has a more distinct click, which has a nice soft ending when the key is pressed down. And then you have brown switches, which have a tactile, quieter click, but when it is pressed down, it bottoms out, similar to how sort of the MacBook Magic keyboard feels. They have 1.5 mil of travel, which is about half a mil more travel than the Magic keyboards on, let's say, the M1 MacBooks, which is ideal for someone who misses their older MacBook keyboards, as the 2015 MacBook had one and a half mil of travel. In terms of force, reds have around 50 grams of force, the blues have around 52 grams of force, and the browns have 55 grams of force. These all feel good, but be aware that if if you're coming from full size switches, then these do have less travel and a little bit less force depending on the switch that you're looking at. The optical switches are slightly different. The red optical switch have two more linear switches to go along with the red switch, but with different actuation forces. So the white switch is the lightest out of all of them, which has 30 grams of force. And then the reds have 40 grams of force, which is 10 grams less than the mechanical version of the reds. And then we have the black optical switch switch, which has 50 grams of force, which makes it sort of feel like a shorter travel version of the Gateron Red switch. The brown switch has the same characteristic as the mechanical brown switch, but it feels a little bit lighter due to it only needing 50 grams of force uh, to push down the key instead of the 55, and it obviously has shorter travel. It does have a slightly hollower feeling to it. Uh, that's across pretty much all the uh, optical switches compared to the mechanical switches, but but overall, it feels really nice. This switch, the brown switch, feels most like the Magic Keyboard on my M1 MacBooks. The clicky optical blue switches only has 48 grams of force, which is actually 12 grams less than the full size version and four grams less than the low profile mechanical version, which might be perfect for those who are looking for a lighter version of the clicky blue switches. But if you are someone who wants something a bit heavier, then Keychron also offers an orange switch, which has 55 grams of force, which I think will be great for blue switch lovers who are looking to get a lower profile optical keyboard. All these optical switches have less travel at 1.1 millimeters, which is 0.1 millimeters longer uh, travel than the MacBook Magic keyboards, uh, just for a point of reference for my Apple fans who might be watching. Unfortunately, I didn't get all the switches, but I did get the optical brown switches and the optical blue switches, which I think will suit most people. Exchanging the switches is really easy. In the box you get a keycap puller to remove the keycap without damaging it and then you get a switch puller which again is included in the box and make sure you press the top and bottom of the switch and then just pull it out gently. Then grab the new switch and place it in the square hole and push it down evenly. Finally place the cap back on and you're done. Here is a quick switch test so that you can hear the differences between the optical blue switches and the optical brown switches. So 
So should you go for optical or mechanical switches? For me, I like the feel of the optical switches as they aren't as loud or as heavy as normal mechanical keys. I like the small travel and the low profile nature of these switches too. They will also be more durable too compared to mechanical keys. So it's ideal if you want to keep your keyboard for a long time. And if a switch or switches do end up failing, you can easily swap it out with this version. The characteristic of each switch do feel a little bit nicer than their full size counterpart. But for me using low profile switches for a little while, I've got used to it and now I almost prefer it. So this is the perfect keyboard, right? I mean, I've been basically talking about how good it is. Well, almost. I wish it did have the dual height adjustable feet that we've seen in the K2 version 2 keyboard so that I could adjust the angle of the keyboard when it's on the desk. But for me, this is as close to perfect as I'm going to find in a keyboard. It's slim. I love the keys. I love the hot swappable functions so that I can change all or part of the keys. And I love the RGB effects too. So yeah, I recommend this keyboard if you are looking to get into your first proper external keyboard. And when it comes to gaming on this keyboard and when gaming becomes a thing on Apple Silicon Max, you are not only going to get a great keyboard for productivity, but gaming too. But there we have it. As always, this is a discussion. So please leave a comment down below on what you think about this keyboard and if you're going to pick one up. Also, check out the links down in the description if you want to support the channel. If you haven't already, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at TechCarmoon. Drop me a like on the video if you've enjoyed it and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. But if you want to see more from me right now, you guys know what to do. There's two videos right over here. You're going to absolutely love them. Click on one of them. Go ahead now. Click anyway, everyone. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.